We had a couple guests on at the beginning of the show yesterday arguing that Twitter had done exactly the right thing, but now they're doing something different. So, you know, is this right? Was that right? What do you think? I, the first thing I would say is I just I love Jack Dorsey because he he always seems so surprised that he's the CEO of Twitter. You know, he always like <laughs> wanders in five minutes late. He's like, what's going on here? Right. Um, look, I, I was really supportive of the initial steps that Twitter took. All it really did was to slow the spread of some really scurrilous reporting and give the truth time to, to tie its shoes before the lie got all the way around the world. So, look, you can have an argument about whether sort of straight up blocking the links is worse than providing content context around them. But we've seen in the past that when Twitter tries to add context, it just puts a tiny little, you know, five word summary under an article that a lot of people are going to miss. So I think it remains to be seen whether this is really going to be a, a better policy than the one that Twitter already had. Nick, it's not clear to me what the lie was if there was one. I mean, I know people were trying to apply different contexts and maybe come to conclusions over what might be the facts in that story. But it seems if you're going to start slowing stuff down, selectively doing it on certain publications and certain stories about certain politicians and not others is likely to get you in trouble. Well, I think it's likely to get you in less trouble, though, if you block full access to the story. I mean, what happened with this New York Post thing, as I understand it at Twitter, is that the piece comes out, and we're not sure exactly if it's true, and we're not sure if it's hacked, right? And hacked material has a bunch of laws, the rules that apply to it. False material has a bunch of rules that apply to it. But we weren't sure kind of on either. So Twitter went sort of maximalist and said, hey, nobody can read it. We're going to block access to it after, of course, it went up into trending. I think that was too much. I actually, I'm obviously not always supporting Facebook when I talk about it, I thought Facebook's policy was pretty much right on. They just slowed down distribution. And they said, we're going to slow down distribution until we know what the hell is going on with this. So I actually thought that was clearer, better, and more in line with the general principle of free speech, which is that you make everything accessible, and then you set the rules over how many people can see it. Uh, Casey, you know, we had uh, Dick Costello on a couple of months ago. At the time, we were talking about deep fakes and doctored videos. And Dick's general point was that Twitter and all platforms were going to have to overcorrect in restricting content. And he said people are going to be upset about that, but it has to be done because the under restriction, in his view at the time, uh, was just not cutting it. And I wonder if you think that is culturally endemic to the company and if it's just now starting to come into sharper relief. I think it is. I think that we've seen Twitter take much more aggressive action uh, to police the platform this year than probably we ever have before. And you're starting to see people get really concerned about it. Um, look, I'm somebody who believes that platforms should exercise confident editorial judgment in the same way that CNBC confidently exercises editorial judgment, right? Uh, obviously, a platform like Twitter is going to enable a much wider range of debate. But it's OK to say, hmm, this thing looks really suspicious. We're going to put a pause on it while we learn more. And I think we need to normalize that sort of thing for these platforms. Otherwise, they're going to continue to be overrun by disinformation campaigns. I think what I'm hearing from the two of you is two different things. Casey, in your case, you're saying that it was okay and perhaps appropriate in this case to block the link, whereas, Nick, you're saying that what Facebook did in terms of just reducing the spread of the story was better. But, Nick, let me challenge you on that. The reasonings were also different. Facebook said that it was subject to their fact checkers, but we don't know anything about their fact checkers, do we? And how do we know that they'd be any better than a mainstream news publications editors? Yeah, we don't know whether face Facebook's fact checkers, we, don't, we actually don't even know yet how they're going to rule on this particular piece of content. So Facebook has kind of put it in a slowdown box until it hears back from its fact checkers. But it's true, even when we hear back from the fact checkers, we won't know exactly who did it, why, and we don't have total trust in them. To the first point about the way I see it versus the way Casey sees it, I agree with Casey 100% on every principle he just laid out there. I think his factual analysis is totally true, as it usually is, right? The tech companies have profound. But you don't think it's. But I think Twitter applied it wrong. You don't. I think Twitter did the wrong thing. They didn't okay. give a clear explanation. They went too far. Then Jack Dorsey threw the communications team under the bus. Like, they were not clear. They were not precise. And I think without a clear justification, you cannot take that strong an action that they took. They were less clear, more strict. I didn't think that was the right move. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.